Well, we've been looking at government employment uh, for a while now, and um, it's especially clear in this Metro Monitor. The metropolitan areas that have recovered the most strongly have been ones where government employment has grown during the recovery. The ones that have had the most sluggish recoveries have been generally ones where the number of government jobs has declined during the recovery. And this matters because government employment means government spending, and government spending creates demand for goods and services. And the lack of demand for goods and services has been the number one reason why the economic recovery has been so sluggish. Cutbacks in government jobs have hindered the recovery. Um, the cutbacks that have happened at the state and local levels have been a drag on the recovery. So far, the legislated cuts at the federal level have not been enormous, but the kinds of cuts that many members of Congress are considering for the near future would be absolutely devastating to the recovery if they're implemented while the economy is still too weak. There is a long-term federal budget problem. Uh, it's a good idea for federal policymakers to have plans to deal with it, but it would be a terrible idea to implement those plans uh, while the national unemployment rate is at over 9%, and in many large metropolitan areas, it's much more than that. Employment at the state and local level makes up the bulk of government employment in most metropolitan areas, Washington, D.C. being an obvious exception. And cutbacks at the state and local level, particularly at the local level, um, have been a drag on the economic recovery. Uh, in most metropolitan areas, most of the large metropolitan areas, uh, there have been cutbacks in local government employment, uh, even as there's been some degree of economic recovery. Housing is the other big story in this Metro Monitor. House prices have hit new lows in the first quarter of this year in all of the hundred largest metropolitan areas. Uh, so housing is not out of the tank by any means yet. Um, in fact, housing is in worse shape than it's ever been since we started doing the Metro Monitors. And this is probably a result of several things. Uh, the sluggish continued recovery of um, jobs and incomes have not helped housing. The continuing overhang of foreclosures on the market uh, have not helped either, even though the number of foreclosures has gone down in most metropolitan areas, it hasn't really gone down enough. Um, there are probably uh, some metropolitan areas where house prices are still too high. Well, manufacturing jobs have experienced a mini boom over the course of the past year. Uh, that's been mainly in durable goods manufacturing. In almost half of the 100 large, largest metropolitan areas, the number of manufacturing jobs has gone up over the course of the past year. And in some metropolitan areas, uh, Detroit and Youngstown in the traditional manufacturing belt, and a couple of man metropolitan areas in California's Central Valley, uh, the number of manufacturing jobs grew by more than 5% over the course of a year, which is really astounding. Unfortunately, in Detroit and Youngstown, um, the growth of manufacturing has not, while well, it's contributed to recovery, hasn't yet propelled those regions into the top ranks of our uh, economic recovery rankings. In fact, both of those places still remain uh, among the 20 weakest recovering metropolitan areas. And I think the reason for that is something that we don't cover in the Metro Monitor, but which you can see in the national data. Even as durable manufacturing jobs have grown over the last year, uh, their wages have gone down.